So, let me introduce you, if you don't know it, Dan Bleak, who is our reviewer trustee. Uh, he's going to give us a little, uh, few words on splat maps and what the unique things about that, what that means. So, Dan, thank you. Turn the mic over to you. Conversation will be just a little bit about repeater coverage because I think we're going to start having conversations about the repeaters that we have and what we might want to do with them next. So, just to kind of see where things are and what the coverage is like. So, what affects repeater coverage? Well, obvious location. Where's that? Antenna height, frequency, TX and RX line off. Right, frequency. Pretty simple. Five minute presentation. So, okay, so where is the repeater relation to its users? What is the terrain of that area? You can have, cool, I got a building. It's down in a hole. Um, how do we account for that? Man, we only had some software to do that. Um, Billy, <laughs> turn your head, Billy, is mad. <laughs> <laughs> distance, <laughs> uh, distance of rising miles, 1.2 times the square root of height. What that kind of says is that if you have a 100 foot antenna, your reach is going to be 12 miles. You want to double that, you're going to have to quadruple the antenna height. You're going to have to go to 400 feet to double your height. So going up just 200 feet only gives you about, uh, when we went from 500 to 700 feet, only gives us about three or four miles of extra coverage. But what it can do sometimes is fill in holes. Uh, frequency, the lower the frequency, the lower the coax loss, and the farther the range. Inverse, the higher the frequency, the higher the coax loss, and the less the range. I was trying to figure out why UHF has less range than VHF, and the best I can explain it to you is um, the molecules in the air will slow down your high frequency a lot more than your low. Um, yeah, transmit receive with the same transmit receive antenna configuration. DE lost works in both transmit and receive pass. So if you have lost going out to the antenna, you have lost coming from the antenna back down to the radio. And you can't always make that up with a power amplifier. Guys, you've got to receive. Is it consistently well. the same? Huh? Is it consistently the same? I mean, as far as I can tell, mathematically, yes. Um, you can get by. Sometimes you can put like a receipt preamp on it, but you have to watch it because your duplexer may not have enough separation if you add your receive him. So sometimes like W4LET, the DMR repeater that a lot of us can use, it has a separate receive and transmit antenna. But you can stick a receive preamp on there and not have to worry too much about because you don't have a duplexer. But in all of ours, we have a duplexer with one antenna. Uh, it's cheaper because you don't have to run two coaxes. Uh, so let's put a lot of these factors in the software and calculate theoretical. And I say theoretical coverage because you can have terrain maps, but they don't always cover things like buildings in the way or antenna factors. So we do this through coverage maps, aka splat maps. It's kind of the nickname for it. 
flat maps. Um, I'm pretty sure that professional radio companies spend a lot of money on that. There's a guy on the internet up in Canada that has this site. So I created an account on it. You let's hey, if you're a ham and you're doing it, you're not making a living for it, you can create an account there. So you can go out there and create your own account, use your call sign so that he knows you're a ham. So I went out there and did that. I was going to do kind of a live demo, but those don't always work very well. But one of the things that when you log into that site, log in a password, you have a menu. Um, you can set up sites, and there all that is is taking an icon and dragging it onto your location. So I created a site called Brunswick for our VH, uh, for the A2 repeater. And that site, now when I go through and oops, when I do a coverage map, I can use my site list. So I've already created a site. I want to do a new coverage. I click on that and I get an entry. This is the entry I did for the 18. Uh, once again, there's a location that I set up. Antenna height above ground in meters, uh, it's 700 feet. It's an Omni, it'll do elliptical or ellipsing, but uh, ours is a Omni. I guess at about 6 dB gain. Uh, assuming our mobiles are five feet off the ground, that's the roof of your car or the trunk lid. Uh, the frequency, because frequency is important. TX power. The line loss, and in this case, the line loss is the same in both directions. Uh, RX threshold and microvolts. You go, well, what the heck is that? Well, the default is 0.5. I look on the specs of radios, like um, and a lot of times, the commercial stuff is 0.5. Some of your ham stuff, your HT is probably about 0.25. Uh, but the one thing about um, sensitivity, sometimes it comes at the expense of selectivity. So sometimes your repeaters are not as sensitive because they're more selective. Um, but I put that in there. That's a pretty good thing. Required reliability, 90%. Just took the defaults on this. And you hit submit. What comes out the other end is an image that looks something like this. This is the A2, right up there in the Brunswick. And the green area is probably your, your good coverage. I would say somewhere around here is where your decent HT coverage is. And I see this. People check in over here on the nets. Guy in Osceola I talked to said he got into it just fine. Um, Sometimes on the, somewhere around here on the interstate, you can start picking up the A2. Uh, people check in from everywhere. Um, pretty good coverage. Um, the 3.7 is at uh, 500 feet, so I generated a map for it. Watch the difference. Kind of cold. Eight two, three dot seven. Oops. What happened? Well, it's not really height that much. It's got uh, more loss in the coax frequency because of frequency. Also, they use seven eight hard line, whereas in the eight two we used inch and five eighths. Uh, why did we use seven and eight hard line? I don't know. The repeaters are giving to us. So that's what it had when we got it. And like I said, there's loss in the line and there's just loss in general. I had a question from <coughs> uh, from somebody. That, <laughs> how can we improve the coverage to the south? I was like, man, pick up the tower and move it, move it to the top of the south. And he chuckled, but he got it. It just, 
That's just the way it is. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, now, you can go and put better coax on it. I'm probably going to put an amp on it just to kind of protect the repeater um, a little bit. But you're only going to get, so you switch out that tension five inch hard line, you're only going to get about 2 dB increase. So you'll probably, oops, um, you'll, you'll probably get a little bit co better coverage, fill in a little bit better. So that's the uh, 3i7. It's awesome in Bartlett. And, and also with our repeaters, they're up and most of the people live in this area. And some people live up here, but most people live here. So our repeater is not exactly central to where everybody is, but it's free. So spaders can be cheaters. Um, now, kind of go back to the A. Oops. Go back to the A2. Some people in, in this area and down in this area don't always get in like they would expect. You see the map down there says you should have good coverage. Front driver. This is for all the OCD people in the room. Uh, this is the Brunswick Tower. It's a little uh, off because it doesn't point true north. It points about 20 degrees off north. Um, there's approximately where our antenna is. Our antenna is not on the top, it's halfway down the side. This is a pretty big antenna, what, probably, what, 10, 12 feet across on each side, 10, 15 feet. It's a huge, there's a lot of stuff running up in the middle of this. There are tons of coaxes running up there. There's a big old metal pipe that's basically a waveguide. So, They've just got a lot of stuff. So to the south and the east, it kind of casts a shadow. Once again, if you're up in Billington or Tipton County, it's awesome. But uh, you you will get a shadow to the south. <laughs> so. All right, uh, Methodist North. We got the three six. Hey, it's not too bad. Um, you can get into it pretty good from this section of town pretty easily. Uh, once again, people up in Bellington and Munford, junk it. I watch this once again. Three six. Go to the two. Sorry, two twenty. Nope, oh, it shrinks. Same thing. Probably not as bad as a four forty repeater. But you do have less range on 220, just not as bad. Uh, once again, my buddies in Marion and up in here go, hey, the 220 repeater's off. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it seems like Marion's on like a high ridge and coverage is pretty good up here. Um, Go back for a second. Your your APRS antenna is probably going to be about the same type of coverage. Um, so if you're up on 385 or you're coming around the North Loop or you're anywhere in there and you're running APRS, you're going to hit it. Hmm. Um, it makes a hop all the way down to Kyerville to get to the I game. Works just fine. 443.2, you can the Memphis and Wilder Tower. Pretty good. Doesn't get outside of the 240 loop very well. Some people in Bartlett can hit it. The whole my H2 is right like the Kirchhoffian. Don't have very good coverage on the feet downtown. But it is, uh, once you get in around this area, it's actually a pretty good coverage for Peter. It's on the east side of the tower, or east side of the building, basically. So, I haven't been there yet to see what it is. Joe told me that, well, y'all put it up on a mast to get it above the um, parapet. parapet around here, because 
They wanted to hide air conditioning about it. Um, and then we got the Germantown repeater. It's on the water tower. I don't know if y'all know where the railroad tracks in Germantown. Germantown Road and the railroad tracks. There's two water towers there. An old one and a new one. I think we're on the old one. Uh, once again, it's not on top of the water tower. It's on the side. So you get some shadows down on this side where you can't quite key it up even on a mobile with 50 watts of cotton mill. So you get a little bit closer. But Germantown's got pretty good coverage. You can probably get into it fine from Cordova. Um, you're not here. It's not going to do too well up here. Uh, once again, it's a free site. Thanks to Jelly for climbing up there and sticking it up there for us. Um, the 625 is connected to the internet. You can get to it to Echo Link. I've listened to the uh, Neshoba net on it. Works. Maybe that's something we'll do in the future on some of the other computers. So many things to get. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's so. Yeah, that's the problem with a lot of our repeaters. I listened to the 443.2 from my house for like three days, and all it did was ID. So maybe we'll have some conversations in the future about what can we do about that. Let's put a DMR up. <laughs> oh, connected to the all good ideas. We'll probably do the com a combination of those. Hey, I'm going to do something without being ham. I don't think even ham's that good. <laughs> but, uh, so, I'll either put it in sparks or see if our PIO will post it as long as Play with it. You can model an antenna at your house. Say what a, you, know, you want to get into bullfrog net. We put this on the repeater page because this is really, really good information for people to understand the code. So maybe I could put this on the repeater page and it would Yes. Um, or put some of the, put some of the pictures or something, because this is very, it's great. Yeah, uh, I was hoping we could do that, you know, put it in the file section of Facebook or put it on our page or something, but yes, just so people see what the coverage is. But like I say, if you want to see what coverage is, say you put up a 35-foot tower at your house, you can see how far you can get out. So I used it a lot just to see. I had a one watt hot spot in my house. I wanted to see what the coverage theoretically was. I drove around and it was pretty close. So it's a good little toy. That was quick. Andrew, that uh, piece on splat maps. Um, real quick, I'll take a final plug. Everybody's got your signal report on the table. If you do want a paper copy, I have paper copies up at the front if you want to put on a paper copy. You don't have to put your call sign in. You stay anonymous. But we welcome your feedback. Um, with that, is there any additional business or announcements? Uh, hearing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Check. Motion to adjourn. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Did you have something in the back? I apologize. No. Fantastic. Motion. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Look forward to seeing you on the night and next and seeing you next month. You are talking.